Spiritual Teaching 316 Disciples, here is the Master again among you. My spirit receives your call and instantly hears your invocation, sending you my universal ray to envelop you with my light. I look for the prepared understanding to give you my teaching, but not only the spokespersons receive my presence. No, I am with all my children, from the toddler to the disciple. Everyone feels at this moment the presence of my Holy Spirit. In truth, not only you feel me from all points of your world, the spirit of my children rises after the doctor of doctors to receive from him the caress, the balm, and the strength. Now's the time of the manifestation of my spirit among humanity. I make myself felt in all my children. I limit myself, allowing myself to be contemplated according to the evolution of each one, to stimulate with it the faith and love of my disciples. The third era has arrived in fullness for humanity. It's been about 2,000 years since I came to give you my word, and the doctrine, despite the time that has elapsed, has not yet been known to all humanity because I am not loved by all my children. Yet they all worship me. They all seek one divine spirit that is mine. But I do not contemplate unification among men. I do not contemplate the same faith, the same elevation and knowledge. And that is why I come as the Holy Spirit to unify them in me, to perfect them with my doctrine of truth, with my immutable word, with my law of justice and love. Most of this humanity calls itself Christian, and the Master calls you and says, if he who were truly Christian, he would have already conquered with his love, humility, and peace the rest of man. But my doctrine, bequeathed from the second era, is not in the heart of humanity. It does not flourishes in the works of men. It is kept in dusty books, and I have not come to speak of the books. By book I bought you my life, my word and my works, my passion and my death as a man. And that is the reason why most of humanity calling itself Christian does not have the peace or grace of Christ because it does not imitate me because he does not practice my doctrine. The kingdom of injustice has ruled over humanity because they have despised my revelations. But now I come in the third era to remind men of my lessons from time past. Why does the reign of injustice reign at this time? Because I contemplate as kings, they who should be servants and those who should have been masters in love and humility, I regard as slaves. Whoever steals and surprises the good faith of others, I find enriched and the tyrant is exhausted and surrounded by flattery. He who is stained with sister blood is elevated to a high place. And those who are victims of human cruelty, they are humiliated. This is how I contemplate your life, humanity. I see many institutions with beautiful names, but not one of them is where truth, love, or charity sprouts. I contemplate that within sects and religions, ministers rise up saying to their people, do good. And truly I tell you, the only one who can say do good is me, because only I do good to you. Men must always say, let's do good. I do not contemplate truth or sincerity because men 
have been contaminated with the evil that reigns. Moreover, despite this, there are those who have remained faithful to my law and have suffered without leaving the path that my love marks them. Through those who have remained faithful to my law, despite the environment that surrounds them, I say to those who suffer, persevere in the good. Remember and live my examples of past times and you will conquer human weaknesses. I revealed my lessons to you in the second era and that teaching was the preparation that I gave you for this third era since your spirit could not rise towards me. I came to you in Messiah being born, suffering, and dying as a man. With my sacrifice, I left the doors open for the hereafter so that your spirit, awakening from its lethargy, will rise to me. I open before you the book of seven seals, the great book of life. And in truth, I tell you that with my sacrifice for the love of humanity, at that time, I unleashed the fifth seal. Today, I do not come as a man among you. I come as the Holy Spirit to teach you so that you may reach communication from spirit to spirit. But for that communication to reach its perfection, I have begun to communicate through the human understanding. But this manifestation will end in 1950. And then these toddlers will become disciples and they will communicate from spirit to spirit with their master. And even when before me, they are my disciples, before humanity, they will be good teachers. Today I prepare you as in the second era, you and those are the same. You are disciples and witnesses of my teaching. The trials have besieged you on the way, but even when you find the obstacle in your path, you will not turn to me your back. You will not deny me because you are witnesses of my promise to return, and you have seen it fulfilled in this time. You will be able to find in my manifestation the same teachings of the second era. But in this era, I have come with the light of my Holy Spirit to reveal to you the infantinable and in communication from spirit to spirit. I will follow you revealing great new lessons. All the content of the sixth seal I will make known to you in this stage of revelations that will prepare you for the time in which I will open the seventh seal. Thus you will go knowing the unfathomable. Thus you will find the spiritual valley is the abode of all the spirits, the infinite and wonderful mansion that awaits you in the hereafter. For you will receive the award of works that with love and charity you have sown in your brothers. At this time your spirit is saturated with my revelations, whether received through the spokesperson or through your spiritual gifts. It is the time when not finding among men a brother to guide you, advise you, and serve as a staff. You come to me because I am the divine cryin who lifts you up and counsels you in your vicissitudes. You have known through spiritualism what spiritual restitution means in your destiny. And in the practice of my teachings, penetrate by my will in the future, and you contemplate as an alert, the test that you are finding in your step, if you do not watch and pray. Your conscience is the judge that does not sleep. It always advises you to watch over your brothers and yourselves. Why do men bring misery and destruction to people? Why don't they respect your life and that of their similar? For lack of spiritual elevation. For having departed from the fulfillment of my law. Could you, in an instant of violence, take up the murder weapon to kill your brother? No, disciples. None of you feel capable of it. Even when I test you greatly. Why? Because you know that each creature has its fulfillment marked in its destiny and it's time to return to me. Do you remember the restitution that awaits 
if you get stained with sister blood? And that fear of my justice make you respect the life of your likeness. And you would like everyone to feel the same respect. The Father tells you, Today the reign of injustice in the world is in its third height. But spiritualism, that is the revelation of the Holy Spirit, will not leave a single corner of the world without His presence. And when my doctrine remains established in the heart of humanity, my reign of justice will be in all men of goodwill. When this divine revelation is duly interpreted by all, there will be no more suicides and homicides. No one will take their own life, least of all he will do with that of his likenesses. Man will have wide knowledge of all his acts, but first I will continue proving it. And if to you I have manifested my teaching through human understanding, I, the Word, will know to make myself heard and understood by all my children. If I told you in the second era that every eye would see me, I will fulfill my promise by making myself contemplate and felt by all men in all my truth. This is why the Master tells you at every moment that your mission to extend my teaching will not be difficult and less impossible because the land has been fertilized and you, like good peasants, will learn to cultivate it better. But know that you will not be the only emissaries or spokesmen of my doctrine. Also the spiritual world is fulfilling its mission among humanity. Both of you will turn your brothers into precursors of my doctrine for generation to come. Through nature you had signs of my coming at this time. I am giving signals to humanity and I am drawing the attention of men of science. Because in this year of 1950, I will shake the hearts of all my sons. Many will be confused by these tests, but instead others will awaken. And after these events, I will arrive as the Holy Spirit and tell you to seek my disciples who possess by revelation of this third era. If they make mistakes as beginners, I, as a perfect teacher, will know how to forgive them and I will deliver them for your conduct of my teaching of preparation that I am entrusting to you through human understanding. And when I contemplate you to all penetrating with love in the spiritual sense of my teachings, I will surprise you by manifesting great revelations and full of joy you will tell me, Master, certainly your wisdom has no end. Persevere in good, disciples. I will not disappoint you. Truly I tell you that when you reach the hereafter, in me you will find the harvest of your good works. Then you will see how beautiful your reward is. For now you don't know what it will be like. Don't even try to imagine it. I just tell you, watch and pray. Sow my seed of love with words with your eyes, with prayer, since charity is given in so many ways. Do it with your fellow men. Truly I tell you, think healthy thoughts so that I can make your wish your own and give to the needy according to my will. Thus, I want to contemplate you, O disciples of the Holy Spirit, as emissaries of peace as doctors of the body and of the spirit, as sowers of divine attributes. Never stop sowing comfort, balm, and peace, so you will be fulfilling your mission until the end of the day. Your work will be crowned with my divine caress, and I will strengthen your spirit with the eternal finery of my blessing. You will receive my last lessons through human understanding, and in them I ask for your unification after 1950. When you no longer have this manifestation, who will take my place? Who will make his voice heard and remember the teachings of the Divine Master? Respect and shyness will invade you. The same spokesman for whom I gave you my teaching 
they will be afraid, nor will the guys familiar with their villages dare to give you my word. What would you do then, O disciples? People, I will speak to you of those who once remain in the world to bear witness to my word, my disciples of the second era. The Messiah had departed. The apostles of his truth traveled the paths of fulfillment. They entered the cities. They visited home, wrote to their distant siblings. The divine word, like a new dawn, began to illuminate the life of humanity, dispelling the darkness in which men had lived. My doctrine on the lips and in the works of my disciples was a sword of love and light that fought against ignorance, idolatry, and materialism. A clamor of indignation arose from those who saw the upcoming collapse of their myths and their traditions, at the same time that in other hearts a hymn of joy arose before the luminous path that there would be hope and faith for those thirsty for truth and those oppressed by sin. Those who denied the spiritual life were exasperated upon hearing the revelations of the kingdom of heaven, while those who sensed that existence and hope for justice and salvation thanked the Father for having sent his only begotten. The men who kept in their hearts the blessed desire to serve and love their God with purity saw their path clear and their understanding illuminated as they penetrated into my word and felt a relief in their spirit and in their heart. Christ, teaching as true spiritual bread, came to fill the immense emptiness they carried. Filling with his perfection and with its essence all the aspirations of his spirit. A new era was beginning. A clear path was opening, leading to eternity. What beautiful feelings of spiritual elevation, love, and tenderness were then awakened in those who were enlightened with faith to receive my word. How much courage and what firmness accompanied those hearts who knew how to suffer and face everything without decaying for a moment. Was it because the master's blood was still fresh? No people. The spiritual essence of that blood, which was the material representation of divine love, it never dried up or extinguishes. It is present, alive, and warm now like then. It is that in those hearts there was also love towards the truth to which they concentrated their life and even offered their blood, thereby confirming that they had learned their lesson from their master. That blood nobly shed overcame obstacles and vicissitudes. How the spirituality of the disciples of my word contrasted with idolatry, materialism, selfishness, and ignorance of fanatics in ancient traditions or of pagans who live just to worship the pleasure of the flesh. Never was the law of God so clear as it was on the lips of the Messiah. That is why the world was moved even deeper roots and many people, setting aside ancient traditions from their heart, gave themselves to the word that in Christ became understandable to men. Never has the world harbored a man who revealed greater teachings or performed greater works. How many mysteries did humanity then decipher? How much light penetrated his spirit, his heart, and his understanding? Those words full of tenderness of the master, his wise parables, profound and at the same time clear, those comparisons for which he took the child, the flowers to make himself understood, those powerful works possible only for a God whom the world called miracles. All this was like a new dew that fertilized the field 
or read as deserts which existed in the heart of humanity. Until then, men did not discover the spiritual meaning that exists in everything created by the Lord, even in the smallest beings. If they took a child in their arms and looked deeply into his eyes and listened to his questions full of innocence and intuitive concern, they felt the presence of a spirit vibrate there, of a being that was something more than that child. If they observed the tender plant that grows hidden in the undergrowth, they immediately discovered in it the impulse to grow, and the power offered the flower of its beauty, thus fulfilling the destiny that its creator pointed out. Thus those men woke up, appearing to inhabit a world not seen before. It was that they were blind and seeing, they did not look. It was that they were deaf and hearing, they did not listen. But I came among men to give them sight, hearing, voice, movement, will, understanding, and sensitivity, so that his spirit imprisoned in the captivity of the flesh, free yourself from its darkness and learn to read and interpret the book of eternal life. Now ask yourselves, new listeners of my word, are those simple and clean still preserved in the world? Analyzers of divine revelation? No. You answer me from the bottom of your heart because you know very well that with each step that the world advances in its science, it is one more step that takes it away from spirituality. Since rather than seeking the spiritual sense or essence that all beings contain, what has interested him is to find the substance and the force purely material. See why I have returned among men and let my word penetrate your hearts? Because at this time a new miracle of conversion, spirituality, and elevation will take place among humanity. Learn from me so that you will be the good disciples of this time. This is the book of my teachings that I am bequeathing to you. There are the writings. They will continue my work among you. When you no longer listen to me in this way, you will review my lessons and in them you will always find new revelations. In reading my teachings, you will have my wisdom, great messages and inspiration. The advice of the spiritual world, you will remember them with the same fragrance that you received them. That time will be for study, analysis, preparation, and when you least think there will emerge among you those who with ease of speech deliver my teaching by inspiration. But how great your preparation will have to be for them to be believed by crowds. Today you contemplate these spokesmen speaking to you in ecstasy, and no matter how great the disbelief of some, you think that my manifestation is possible through these channels. But when humanity contemplates my disciples speaking in their normal state of divine revelations, will doubt them. In my own congregation, those who doubt will arise when they hear you speak with my inspiration and you will have to bring a great preparation and spiritual clarity to be believed. So I will continue to manifest myself, whether it is only one to listen to you or a crowd, whether your audience is made of, of select men, rude or so-called wise. Before some and before all, I will manifest myself by your understanding. If you know how to prepare, I will give the tests requested by those who hear you. So I will continue sowing my spiritualist work, Trinitarian, Marian. My revelation as the Holy Spirit in the beat of humanity. Then you will understand that my communication with you will not be interrupted at the end of 1950. Because the bonds of God and his children are eternal. In the third era, I came to realize with the clarity of my manifestation the impossible of men. 
Communicate by human understanding. Understand me, disciples, because in the communication from spirit to spirit that awaits you, you will feel my presence eternally. If you know how to prepare, you will never say to me again, Lord, why don't you come? Why don't you contemplate my pain? You will not speak to me like this, disciples. Truly I tell you, whoever speaks to me like this will give tangible proof of their ignorance and their unpreparedness. I do not want to contemplate my disciples far from me. I want you to tell me in your spirit, Master, you are among us. Our spirit fills you. Your wisdom is the source of my inspiration. That's the real confession that I want to hear from you. I do not want to contemplate in my new apostles as Thomas. I want to see in you the dedication of John, that you all feel me always in your spirit. But I do not want you to feel like slaves before me, because you may fall into a new fanaticism. In the moments of your fulfillment in my doctrine, give yourself spiritually, and in the moments of your tertiary duties, surrender with all preparation. I tell you again not to fail slaves before the master. Have the true spirituality that my doctrine gives so that you give to God what is God and to Caesar what is Caesar. So you will have peace and you will be happy in your fulfillment without parking. You will not proclaim to be my witness. You will demonstrate with your works that you are sowing my truth. When I stopped giving you my word in this way in 1950, I am not going to seclude myself in rest because my universal spirit, it never rests. I am eternal activity. I am always fighting for the improvement of all my creatures. I am the travel companion in the evolution of my children. I am your counselor and at the end of each stage, I am the one who receives the fruit of your fulfillment in my law. I am the perfect gardener, and I will not cut the fruit when they are green. I will know how to become a gale to whip the trees, and I will make their bad fruits fall, but my love will preserve them, and my spirit will rejoice eternally in their progress and its evolution. Rise up on the path that leads you to the top of the mountain, and each step you take, you will understand better my teachings and you will improve yourself to interpret the divine language. What is the language of the spirit? It is love. Love is the universal language of all spirits. Don't you see that human love also speaks? Many times he does not need words. He speaks better with deeds, with the thoughts. If this is how human love is manifested, what will your language be like when you perfect yourself in my law. Walk with firmness, disciples. Do not be cowed before trials, before vicissitudes. Think that before you. I have passed along the road and I have left it blessed with my footprint. Pray for humanity. That is your mission. Come to me, who am an exhaustible source of comfort and balm, and bring that presence to your brothers. In this instant, I penetrate into the hearts of my children and distribute my seed of love. But what love will be which land is fertile that makes the seed germinate? Today you still do not know, but if you become good farmers, you will know to sow my teachings in the sick, in the stubborn, and in the vicissus, and those thirsty for love and peace. In everything, you will be depositing the incalculable treasure of my word that will grow in your spirit. If you are all peasants of the divine gardener, if you are all collaborators in my cultivation of love, it is because you will all have joy in the culmination of my work. All of you will sit at my table and there will be a party in heaven. You will all be the wise virgins of my parable. Not there the prodigal son will exist. 
all of you will have conquered my kingdom and you will hear the most beautiful and sublime of concerts. Your spirit will experience the greatest happiness, understanding at last the great love of your Father. My peace be with you.